Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a relatively recent reanalysis and I guess in some sense discovery that turns out our own solar system seems to be actually a little bit closer to the central region of the galaxy, including the central black hole. And our sun also seems to be moving faster around the galaxy than we initially thought. In other words, it looks like Earth is much closer to Sagittarius A star black hole after all. Now, only a little bit closer in terms of the previous numbers, but when I say a little bit closer, I mean like a thousand light years closer, which is actually quite far. But let's talk a little bit more about this analysis and also about the details of this study. And here I think it's really important to understand that it's kind of difficult for us to study our own galaxy from within it, especially when it comes to calculating distances and calculating sizes of different things. And the main reason for this is because we're looking at everything from essentially one of the galactic arms of the Milky Way. And in some sense, it's sort of almost like trying to create a map of your own house by being somewhere in a, for example, a shower with the curtains closed. It's almost impossible, or at least extremely difficult, to actually see everything in the galaxy by being where we are. But it doesn't mean that we can't try, and as a matter of fact, we've been doing a pretty good job at figuring out where things are and figuring out all of the other things about our own galaxy, including the shape, the size, and what's inside of it. But the original calculation of where the Sun and the Earth were located compared to the center of the galaxy were originally done back in 1985 and were estimated to be just a little bit over 27,000 light years, which would place it somewhere around here, with the average speed of the Sun moving around the galaxy being about 220 kilometers per second. And this wasn't really questioned much until the study from last year estimated the distance to be closer to about 26,500 light years, and this also meant that the Sun was moving a little bit faster around the galaxy. But these calculations were still not perfect and did rely on some of the data that has since been changed. And what's really important to also understand is that, thanks to a lot of different new projects, including the one right here from Japan, known as VERA, which is a very exciting radio astronomy project that's using a very interesting technique known as Very Long Baseline Interferometry. And the best example of this technique was when these telescopes you see on the screen were able to combine their data creating essentially a telescope size of planet Earth, and using this technique, after several years of observations, the scientists were able to create this beautiful picture, the first ever picture of a black hole. But the Japanese Vera is obviously much, much smaller. It's really just using the telescope roughly the size of Japan as you see in this picture, but because it's all in Japan and because essentially they're using relatively similar techniques, it's much easier for them to analyze data and it's a lot quicker to actually analyze everything around us. And so not so long ago they released some of their first initial results and the results were extremely interesting. In this case, they weren't actually looking at black holes, they weren't really looking at any unusual things, they were just looking at various radio signal emitters around the galaxy, and they were trying to calculate their precise motion and precise location in the galaxy. This is what we usually refer to as astrometry. And in this case, they were looking at these objects known as masers, which essentially is kind of like a laser that emits microwave light instead of um, optical light. There are lots of masers around the galaxy, and usually they're produced by different types of objects, but in most cases we know what produces them. And so they looked at about 99 of these masers for a period of one year because it also allowed them to use the motion of Earth around the Sun to then calculate the amount of parallax and thus calculate the exact distance to these objects. But because they were using a telescope dish that was roughly around 2600 kilometers in diameter, they were able to calculate all of this to extreme precision, which also allowed them to calculate not just the distance, but also the speed of these objects, and of course establish where they were located compared to everything else in the galaxy. And following the initial processing of this early data, they were then able to create a relatively accurate estimate of where everything is located, but most importantly, where our sun is located compared to everything as well. And obviously the results are different from what we initially thought. We are much closer, about 25,800 light years away from the center of the galaxy, and also it seems that Earth is moving around the galaxy with a speed of about 227 kilometers per second, which is about 7 kilometers per second faster than the previous assumption. 
Now obviously this might not sound like a lot and also it might not seem like a big change, but when it comes to precision and measurements in space and especially in our own galaxy, this is actually a big deal. It also means that maybe certain things we assumed before will need to be recalculated as well. And just to give you an example here, the difference in distance here is basically as if we suddenly found ourselves in the middle of the Orion Nebula, which is around 1300 light years away from us. So basically that's by how much the distance changed. But this value might change again in the future because now the Japanese scientists want to include other Asian telescopes into their observations as well, essentially creating a kind of a East Asian network which will allow them to calculate things even more precisely. Although chances are the values are not really going to change that dramatically anymore. This was a pretty accurate observation and it does seem to have just enough data points and enough analysis to suggest that this is a pretty accurate value both in speed and in distance. However, this might change some of the previous analysis, for example, of different energy events coming from the center of the galaxy, which did rely on this outdated distance value. Since the value changed by roughly around 7 to 8 percent, it does mean that some of the previous calculations may have been slightly exaggerated. But it's also really important to do these observations and these calculations because it allows us to sometimes solve certain mysteries. One good example of one recent mystery and recent anomaly that was actually due to a distance miscalculation was a discovery of a black hole with unusual mass that didn't make sense. Turns out when the scientists recalculated everything, the star where the black hole was most likely located was actually much closer to us and thus the black hole had much much smaller mass. And this suddenly explained everything very well. The black hole was not anomalous, nothing was unusual and everything was just as it should be. But as always trying to calculate distances in space and also trying to see how far away things are and even how fast they're moving is usually very very difficult for us. Because here we're essentially trying to create a three-dimensional image of everything by just seeing things in two dimensions. Because from our own perspective, from planet Earth, everything just kind of looks like a big map. Nothing here is three-dimensional. And that's why surveys like the one that Japan just completed, and about which you can learn in the description below, allow us to slowly get closer and closer to a perfect recreation of the Milky Way galaxy in three dimensions. But I guess until we learn something else or until we discover something else unusual about the location of planet Earth or the galaxy itself, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support the channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that actually is currently on sale because of the Black Friday slash Cyber Monday. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.